Welcome everyone to the next Captain Community Meeting. It's April 2nd, uh, week three of the lockdown, uh, but we're still in good spirits, right? Christian. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so Christian, uh, you're, you'll be the main act uh, of today's uh, community meeting. I just have a couple of other points on the agenda, but then the floor is yours. Uh, I wanna make sure, first of all, this document is accessible by everyone, right? If you go to the Captain Community um, meeting uh, page, you will find all the previous, the agendas and the recordings and all that stuff. So the first one, a quick uh, FYI, we just released the latest uh, bridge early access program. So if you hopefully know that we have uh, on the Captain's, um, so, by the way, Christian, just double check. You see my screen, right? Yeah, I can see your screen. Perfect. Yeah. So the on the Captain website, if you click on releases or documentation, and then under references, you find an entry for the Captain's Bridge, and here is always the latest and greatest uh, EAP version that we put out there. And as you can see from the timestamp, should be pretty obvious. This is really completely fresh off the press. It's from April second. And uh, I just happened to have it installed earlier. And uh, it's really, uh, really cool stuff that folks have been putting in here. So there's a lot of hidden, not hidden, but cooler, like uh, smart links, I think, as they call it. Also, the, uh, let me double check here, uh, the, the heat map. So they did a lot of improvements to navigate around. So check it out, make sure that you are up to date on the latest uh, version and then please give us uh, feedback about it to the Slack channel. So that's the first thing. Um, I think actually one of the features, Christian, that you will show us later on are deep links. Yep. Connection later. Second thing is we've put out a survey and we will post the survey as well in the uh, Slack channel later on, but you may wanna grab it from here as well or actually I'll copy it and I'll put it into, now I just need to find the jet window. That's typically the biggest challenge. Where is my jet window? And uh, I'll may just do it. Uh, yeah, folks can ask questions as well. We'll try to moderate as good as we can. And once I find the chat window, I'll chat it. I'll, I'll do it later on once you are, you are presenting. But the point of the survey is if you open it up, it is a, a form. Uh, we want to know more about uh, you and how you actually ended up with Captain. How did you hear about it? Which version are you using? And so on. Just a couple of questions that we would like so we better understand where you're coming from, what your intentions are, which environments you're running on, and what you want, where you want Captain to go. So this will help us learn a little bit more about you. So that's the um, that's the uh, the Captain survey. The third thing I want to talk about quickly is the Captain sandbox. So you may have seen it in uh, last week's presentation from Christian, where he walked us through creating a captain service from scratch within a couple of minutes. So if you have your own projects, your own captain extensions, whether it's a captain service, whether it's a tutorial, whether it's just a bunch of uh, scripts that help you integrate with another tool, then please tell us about it. Um, there is, a, if you go to the Captain Sandbox, a repository that's pinned, uh, it's called Contributing, and uh, Jürgen did a phenomenal job in explaining everything, how you can, um, how you should prepare your Captain Sandbox project and how we can then actually pull it over to Sandbox. So once it's in Sandbox, it has a, all the projects have a place to live. And once we see this is a project a lot of people are using and has the right quality status, then the idea is we're moving it over to Captain Contrib, which is an officially kind of uh, Captain Contribution. Um, so it's, we're kind of following the CNCF workflow here. So these are these three things that I wanted to highlight. And I think now the main act, Christian, uh, thank you so much. Um, it's about uh, Captain with GitLab and I have used your example in the past at different uh, presentations. I've given different meetups and conferences, but now we want to hear it from the creator on how you <laughs> integrated uh, Captain with GitLab and what the use cases are. So I will stop my sharing now. And I see a mm -hmm. lot of questions are coming in. That's great. Actually, uh, Peter Gryffindor, it seems you are hitting the H button because we have about a hundred questions from you. Um, I hopefully didn't fall asleep. And on the H button, Okay, so I will share my screen. Yeah. So you can see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. 
So what we have here is basically a, a very simple GitLab pipeline with um, a build stage, deploy, test, and verify stage. Um, on the build stage, we are just creating a little Docker image, um, which we can then deploy to our cluster. Um, on the deploy stage, the first job we're going to run is um, the create captain quality gate job, which will actually ask captain, hey, captain, do you have already my project onboarded on my service onboarded? If not, it will create the project and service for you. And then it will um, also update the SLI and SLO files in captain. Then we will deploy the application to a monitored environment from Dynatrace. Then we will send a deployment finished event. And then with the deployment finished event, my new captain service, which is called uh, the captain synthetic um, service, will automatically create a synthetic check in Dynatrace for your service. And then we are running some load tests using JMeter, but this is totally optional. So if you are running um, JMeter tests, you can as well use the Captain JMeter service for, for running this test as we in our company are using some other load generators and so on. We are still relying on this stage. Mm -hmm. And when the test is done, we will start in Captain evaluation with a captain evaluation um, job. Um, this will trigger the um, captain start evaluation event in captain. Captain will then retrieve the SLIs from the SLI provider, which is Dynatrace in, in our case. And we will yeah, um, ask in intervals, hey, is the evaluation done? And if it's done, we will get the results back directly into our pipeline and then create our yeah, deployment and stop the pipeline if it's failing and if it's not failing, it will directly go on to the next stage. So, yeah, that's basically what the pipeline is doing. So let's trigger the pipeline. So I've configured the pipeline that it should run every time I create a new tag. So we'll create a new tag here. Tag. Let's see if the pipeline started. Yep. So it's the pipeline is running. Uh, in the meantime, I want to show you what you have to configure in your GitLab um, environment or in the GitLab repository to get this old stuff up and running. So first of all, you have to connect your Kubernetes cluster to your GitLab um, project. Um, here I'm using GitLab.com. So if you're running uh, GitLab on-prem or GitLab uh, um, in, your, in your company, you can um, define this Kubernetes cluster not only on a project level, you can define these clusters directly on your groups. So this doesn't need to be done every time. So I have my Kubernetes cluster, Dynatrace demo, with an environment scope of uh, star. So it's in wildcard. So every environment will be yeah, um, published to this cluster. Um, environments are one-to-one -one mappings for the GitLab, sta uh, GitLab sorry, for the captain stages. Mm -hmm. So I have here my environment test, um, which represents my shipyard YAML file, um, um, yeah, my shipyard YAML stage, which is uh, as well a test. So, and last but not least, you have just to configure some CICD variables, which we are using within our pipeline. So we have here our Dynatrace API token and our Dynatrace tenant ID. So we can directly speak with the Dynatrace API within our CICD jobs. So, and last but not least, the repository itself. So we have here our files, we have our SLI YAML, our SLO YAML, and our shipyard file. So the shipyard file is very basic. It's only one stage named test. And yeah, what I like on this solution, um, you can use the, the Git upstream repository in Captain. 
where you can adjust the, the SLI and SLO files. But if you don't want to uh, switch to an extra repository, you can just adjust the, the settings here within the two files. And then when your pipeline is running, it will automatically update the files in your Captain project. So let's switch to the web IDE and go directly into our pipeline configuration. So we have here the GitLab CI YAML file, which is my main entry point of my pipeline. So um, I have defined here some global variables like my project name, my service name. Um, then I'm including my uh, templates. So I have my create Captain Quality Gate template, uh, template my create deployment event, the alerting we will not cover today, um, my JMeter load test, then uh, my problems API template and my captain evaluation template. In GitLab, you can not only uh, um, include local templates, you can include templates from central repositories. So in our case, in our company, we have a cent uh, central template repository. And then you just reference it like this, include from project, and then you have your group pass, template repo, and then the file. And then you can say, okay, I want um, to have these tag version of the template, for instance. Or you normally when you don't reference here anything, it will pull the latest master. So next we are defining our stages, like the build, deploy, test, and verify stage you have seen before. So we have our build stage, but that's not really interesting. So the first thing we are going to run is a create captain quality gate, create or update. So this is basically included from our create captain quality gate YAML. I will open this file up. Give me a second. Uh, where it is quality gate. And you can see here, I'm referencing the environment as well, test. So we need this environment um, to tell Captain which state he should work on. So um, the template is, yeah, it looks like a normal job in, in GitLab CI. So I um, have here my stage defined. I have my image, which should my GitLab runner, uh, runner is using, the CI CD tools latest. I can show you quickly what I mean with the with the file with the with the image. So I have prepared an um, a little Alpine Docker image where I have the Captain Seal I installed, which I'm using in every job when I'm when I'm working with Captain. So I just need to run it with my. I don't need to to um, install it every time. Mm -hmm. So I'm just including this Docker image, which is on this. In, in the GitLab registry, and then I can start using captain commands directly out of it. So first we are authenticating against our cap, uh, captain API endpoint. So I have my uh, um, variables here with the captain endpoint. This is really straightforward. I think it's already in the documentation, right? It is, yeah. Yeah, so um, getting my endpoint, my API token, and then I'm, because Captain or the Captain seal I actually do not provide any functionality that I can say, hey, Captain, um, which services are already onboarded. So I have here a little workaround. I'm um, querying the Lighthouse config from a project. And if the light, Lighthouse config exists, mm -hmm. then I know my project is already onboarded. And if not, it will um, yeah, create the project and create the service. And I think and you also have referenced up there the the cap the captain enhancement proposal to just these, yeah. uh, get this capability into the CLI. Yeah, right. Pretty great, yeah. So I think it's really amazing. So what you basically do here is you you just uh, create a captain project on the fly in case one yeah, does right. not already exist for your GitLab project. That's yeah, right. Exactly. So the developer itself has nothing. To yeah, do. nothing to do. So he he, he did not necessarily need to deal with the uh, captain seal I and, and uh, create the service by himself. So he just needs to include the quality stage template, a quality gate template to his project and the template will take care of the rest. Mm -hmm. um, so if 
we are creating the service. We are also configuring the Lighthouse uh, config map mm -hmm. for the project and then updating our SLI and SLOs. And last but not least, we need to um, configure our Dynatrace secrets for the Dynatrace SLI provider. Mm -hmm. So that's what the last lines here are doing. Uh, is it all? Yeah. So we're getting secret from, from the captain namespace with the Dynatrace credentials project name. And if he found secrets, uh, or if no secret is existing, he will uh, create a new one. And if there is an, uh, a, already a secret, he will recreate the secret. So basically, you bootstrapped, you automated the, the complete creation of a project in Captain, onboarding a service, uh, yeah. adding or updating the, the SLIs and SLOs, configuring, in this case, Dynatrace as the data provider, but this could also be, let's say, Prometheus, because you mm -hmm. also have Prometheus. And then the only thing you need to do as a developer that runs a GitLab pipeline is include that particular step, and then you're good to go. Yeah, he just needs to include um, the YAML file in now here in this case from the local repository, but as I said, it can be in, in central repository. Mm -hmm. It can as well be, I think in GitLab, you can run something as a four stages. Mm -hmm. So you can force every project in, an, in a group to, to run um, some, uh, um, some jobs, but there's nothing we are doing right now. Mm -hmm. And the only thing, is to to add some some additional context to the to the template like the environment name mm -hmm. and this only text hint is that the job should only run on text because mm -hmm. i'm uh, um yeah i'm pushing a lot of code in this repository for for testing purposes and i don't want to run uh, every time it, a pipeline of course when i yeah. when i push code into, into it so next we are deploying our application as well, the same procedure. I have my image, I have my environment, and then I'm running my Helm upgrade command. Um, I'm just doing this uh, via Helm, or, or this is only for the demo. Um, normally, if you're deploying a workload to Kubernetes, you could completely use Captain. So this is, as I said, only for the demo here. Um, you can deploy to any other systems if you want. You can use uh, something to cloud formation or, or whatever. It's just uh, as an example how it could be done. So um, we are deploying our application, waiting that the uh, deployment is done by Helm. Then we are um, asking Helm for our health endpoint and our ingress host. And when we have everything together, I know the exact URL from my um, deployment. Then I'm creating a uh, um, unique identifier, which I can then use for the deployment finished event in Captain. So here I'm yeah, preparing my, my JSON file, which I will um, send after uh, to, my, to my Captain deployment, or to my, to my Captain. So it's uh, the deployment finished event. Um, I add my CI, CI project pass. Um, to source, adding the ID. I have here my project name, my environment slug. The environment slug is the, the environment variable, so it's test. Um, I have my service name, my deployment strategy, um, my, commit, my commit tag, my registry image, and then some labels. And um, it's interesting, both labels are here the a synthetic manually assigned app and the frequency. And last but not least, my deployment URL, uh, URI public, which is, I think it was introduced in Captain 061, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I will write my event down as a file because I want to have um, this file as well as an um, CI job artifact. Then I authenticate against my captain and yeah, send the event that deployment is finished. And then you should see in your captain bridge, already the deployment finished event, which we are triggered by our pipeline. You can see the labels and, oh, actually the evaluation is already done. Oh no, it's start evaluation here. It is. Um, okay, um, then, 
because Captain right now um, with the deployment finished event, there's um, first of all, um, so synthetic check creation triggered by the um, synthetic service I've written, as well as um, the deployment event is pushed to Captain and to Dynatrace. But unfortunately, there is some data missing right now, which I want to see in Dynatrace, like my pipeline um, CI backlink, mm -hmm. which is right now not passed over. So that's why I create uh, another deployment event with um, another template. But we're moving these things over, thanks to yeah. your feedback into the yeah. Dynatrace uh, service, yeah? Yeah, you said it will be obsolete when the Captain Dynatrace service could pass additional deployment information. Um, yeah, then we are running our load test stage. I don't think I need to show this or do you want to see it? No, nah, it's okay. I'm okay. Just... And then we are running the most interesting stages of our captain evaluation stage. Um, I will start it here a little bit delayed because um, my JMeter test is really, really small. So it will run in a minute or so and to have, yeah, a little bit more of uh, um, a normal or authentic scenario, I let it wait for a couple of minutes and then start the evaluation. So it's the evaluation stage is basically the same you have seen before. I'm logging to my captain. And then it's getting um, yeah, interesting. So the first thing I'm going to do is I query the Dynatrace API to get from my captain service the entity ID. With the entity ID, I can query the Dyn uh, Dynatrace uh, um, events API for my last deployment I've done on the service. And with the last deployment, I'm getting the start time timestamp, which I can then use to um, pass over my captain um, evaluation start time. So I have my start date, then I'm getting my current timestamp. Then I, yeah, I'm just calculating the minutes which should be uh, looked with the evaluation done event or with a captain evaluation, sorry. And um, then I'm sending the start evaluation event to my project and the stage with a time frame which I have calculated and the start time. So, and uh, with this command, I'm getting back in a context ID from Captain, which I can then use to ask the Captain API, hey, Captain, do you have an evaluation done event? I will repeat this every five seconds till I have my evaluation done event from Captain. Mm -hmm. And then I can take a look in the result so this is basically in the, in the data result here. And if the result is failed, oh, what I forgot to mention, sorry. <laughs> your, your deep link, I'm sorry. So um, with the bridge URL, I have my, my captain bridge, my service name, my con captain context ID, and my event ID, which is also in the, in the evaluation done event. And so I have my direct backlink to the captain's bridge. And if the status has failed, I will fail the complete pipeline. And if it's finished, it can go further and it will print out the, the bridge URL. If the job is failing, um, the person who triggered the job will get an email from GitLab or you can send a Slack notification or whatever you want. It depends on the um, integration you have configured in your GitLab um, environment. And so the developer will get an email to, hey, your job failed because of evaluation. And here's the link directly in the captain um, bridge if you want to take a look why it's failing. So, and let's go back to our um, CICD pipeline. So you can see everything is done and passed. And here in the captain evaluation stage, I have directly, um, where is the open link here? Yeah, that is pretty cool. 
it's linked to the level agent on event. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And then you click on evaluation comparison, and then we also see the heat map over time. That's also yeah, right. awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so to to kind of recap, I know you sh you walked us through the whole code that you wrote your your GitLab integrations. This is also all on your GitHub repository. That means yeah. people that want to do the same thing, they just add these building blocks into the GitLab pipeline, which means that um, you are sending, let's say, Captain a deployment event which uh, tells Captain about a deployment, which can also then be used for automated test execution so the Captain can actually run the test as well. And you are doing it yeah. from your pipeline right now. Um, I think what we have not seen yet, I'm sure you'll show us, is the, uh, this will also trigger the creation of a synthetic test. So every yeah. time you deploy a service, you automatically create the synthetic test. After your, your yeah. load tests are run, you also then do the, the quality gate evaluation, which are based on SLIs and SLOs that your developers have specified in, the, in their own Git repo. And that's yep. this week. So here's the, uh, the monitor I created. So it was actually created, but it will update all the time. So if something is changing, like the, like the URL of your deployment or so on, it will check, hey, do I have an uh, already in synthetic monitor for um, yeah, project, service, and stage? Mm -hmm. And if so, it will update the monitor, and if not, it will create a new monitor. And I think the cool thing here is, if you are using pipelines to deploy services, then and we we talked about this in the blog that we wrote together. Uh, then obviously Kubernetes itself internally is checking the health endpoint. If you run, if you deploy on Kubernetes, yeah. but if you deploy on Kubernetes and your service is accessible from the outside, you have no clue or no validation if the outside link is actually working so that's why setting up a synthetic test fully automatically to test the outside link is great and the second thing is to works in application if you you know those that are not deployed on kubernetes yeah right um, let's take and it. if you want to take a look the project was moved over to the sand, uh, captain sandbox on monday mm -hmm. by jürgen mm -hmm. so I'm not a Go developer, I have to admit, but um, if you have any ideas or any uh, contributions, just, yeah, contribute to the project. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of things we can, we can uh, put into like um, more configuration options or like uh, um, stuff like uh, click pass scripts or so, mm -hmm. which comes to my mind. Um, actually, or right now, um, when you're deploying synthetic service over, over the captain service, it will, it's only supporting um, HTTP checks, which are um, only runs on um, active gates, which is synthetic enabled. So it will look in your Dynatrace tenant, which active gates are available and um, assign a check to every active gate. Mm -hmm. So perhaps, um, or another thing, I want to make it configurable on which active gates, uh, gates it could be run, mm -hmm. and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. Oh, but it's cool, right? It's automated SLA validation. You, you automatically set up your SLA tests from yeah. an external, like through, in this case, Dynatrace Synthetic. Yeah, yeah right. Very cool. Awesome. Uh, Christian, anything else? Um, I don't know if you want to see the get problem stage. Sure yeah, I think, as well. yeah, I think that's uh, definitely also another interesting aspect because you are basically here just querying for any problems, right? That yeah, right. detected by the monitoring tool, again, in this case, time address uh, on that environment that uh, you were just deploying and running tests on. So you are even extending the, uh, the pipeline validation beyond SLIs and SLOs but actually also factor in any problems that may have been detected by your full stack monitoring tool. Um, yeah, right. So um, where it is, get problems. So um, yeah, it's, it's uh, just one curl command. Mm -hmm. The Dynatrace pro uh, problems feed with my captain service, my captain stage. Mm -hmm. And if something is uh, 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 yeah, getting returned by, by uh, this query, 
I will fail the pipeline as well and uh, print out a link to the actual problem ID. So you can click on the problem ID uh, on the link in your, in your email you get from, from GitLab. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, jump directly into your Dynatrace tenant and see uh, which problem was detected. Mm -hmm. Cool. Do me one more favor before we switch back to my slides and then kind of open it up for question and wrap it up. Can you go back to the pipeline? Because yeah. I know there's that a, a large portion of the Captain Core team is uh, is on the call. And I think first of all, it's it's great that you know first of all you, but also the Captain team has designed Captain in its current state, so you can actually do all these integrations through the APIs. And it's very interesting to see that you are. You're using uh, for Captain mainly the CLI because you baked it into your into your container and your tool container. You know, I'm I'm a lazy bastard. <laughs> no, that's okay. So, uh, that's okay. So but before I, I am touching curl and I have a CLI command, I'm I'm using this one. But yeah, you're right. I I could do a lot of stuff with with uh, the Captain API as well. It's, it's perfectly fine, right? This, that is what the CLI is there for. But um, I just wanted to recap also for us to take back uh, in terms of how can we make this even easier. Um, that means you, I know we talked about that you get uh, additional comments on the CLI or the API to you so you can query uh, existing projects and existing services. I know the team has yep. already does already have this in the bucket list so that we have all the um, the crowd operations uh, supported. So that's already coming. Uh, yeah, that's what we are doing here in create Captain Quality Gate. Mm -hmm. um, all the stuff which I'm right now have the workaround with, exactly. a, with, a, with a Lighthouse config. Exactly. But if I could query directly the Captain CLI, it would be much nicer. Yeah. So that's one thing. The second thing, again, just recapping, because this will be great. It's this great input for our future development. Uh, you mentioned that uh, the labels, the, la the stuff that you put on the captain event, whatever event, should then also be understood by the Dynatrace service that is pushing these events to Dynatrace and then taking the labels uh, as custom yeah. properties. So they also show up in Dynatrace. That's already, uh, we, we have uh, we have an, um, uh, an, an item for that already on our bucket list. Yeah, that's here. Let me quickly load mm -hmm. my service. So as you can see here, I have my deployment events. Um, this is the captain applied deployment event mm -hmm. and this is my manually applied deployment event and here i have my ci backlink so i can directly click here exactly and see which pipeline was deployed mm -hmm. or, or have deployed the service version and as well as directly which job of my pipeline and if this could be uh yeah passed over in any any kind of label within the deployment finished event, this would be awesome. Yeah. So I think that's definitely something we can work on. We, we have on our list. The other thing is your pipeline now, you know, we we have a lot of capabilities already in Captain. When you tell Captain about the deployment, it can then automatically execute the tests and then do the validation. So, and you said this, this is part for the demo. So this pipeline would look also different and much cleaner and smaller if you would just say captain here's my artifact deploy it or captain yeah. i deployed it here's my url and then you do all the rest basically the whole testing phase would be managed by captain um, and then the validation the only thing you need to do is i have a deployment and then you just wait for the result yeah right so that's also really cool so yeah. um in the end what when when we leave this stage out of the of the pipeline and running the um J-meter tests uh, with the Captain JMeter service, mm -hmm. we can just add here in the verify stage, or or we can add a job which will query the, the uh, Captain API endpoint yeah. um, to wait for a, um, a finished event, or mm -hmm. or at least not at least, but but um, just what needs to be done if it's running with all the Captain services, you just need to wait here on a job. Uh, um, like the captain evaluation stage for the um, evaluation done event exactly. and you know your chain meter tests are passed mm -hmm. evaluation has passed and and that's mm -hmm. it 
That's perfect. And I think we should also think of folks, team that are on the call and listening in. I like it that you are also querying the Dynatrix problems. We can also include this, I believe, in the evaluation stage because it is just another SLI metric, the number of problems that have been opened for that particular uh, tag. And that's yeah. basically it. Yeah. Cool. So for perhaps in the, in the Dynatrix um, SLI provider or Dynatrix monitoring service. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. Christian, I'll just quickly take over control uh, yeah, and just sharing. share my screen. Um, and I want to say thanks again. Um, I, on the um, community notes, we added the links to your repos, also to your uh, the GitLab extensions. And Christian, maybe we also at some point want to think of whether we want to move them over as well to the sandbox. Uh, we can figure this out. It doesn't make, I mean, you probably tell us where it makes more sense, where it lives. Um, just an outlook. There's going to be, uh, you know, around every week we'll have a, a developer focused meeting and then a user focused meeting. Today was a user focused meeting. Next week uh, we have the second dev meeting. And then on the April 16th, we have a similar presentation as today. But in that case, it's going to be kept integrated with the Atlassian tool stack. So we'll see Bitbucket integrations and so on and so forth. So also a couple of meetings coming up. Things obviously have changed. I'm moving around with all the virtual events and some events being moved or canceled. So I will try to keep this up to date. And um, I also saw there were some questions coming in, but it seems these questions all came in from either bots or people that wanted to, uh, that have too much time at home and really don't uh, care about the problem, about what we're talking about. Some people were, were falling asleep on their on their keyboard, uh, keyboard, I don't know. But if there are questions from the audience uh, that is still out there, uh, feel free to put them into the uh, question feature, the Q&A feature or into the chat window. Um, while we're waiting, while we give another 30 seconds or a minute on this to type in your question, Jürgen, is there anything else that you wanted to add that I've forgotten about maybe upcoming, um, upcoming events? Uh, no, I think uh, the list is uh, pretty much uh, complete with the upcoming events. Uh, I also just want to highlight that uh, next week, same time, uh, we are hosting the Captain uh, developer meeting. So bring your questions uh, when they are also very much uh, focused on how to integrate with Captain. I think uh, today we've seen uh, great work from Christian. Uh, so that will be an inspiration, I guess, for a lot of us. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, join us also again next week. That, that would be my uh, recommendation. <laughs> and uh, Jürgen, I, th I think I saw you were posting the link to the to the survey in yes. the chat. That's great. And we will also uh, post it on in the Slack channel. Uh, I think right after this one here, once we're done here. Awesome. Thank you. And. Um, well, I hope to see all of you that are online next time. And Christian, I will, I'm pretty sure we'll definitely see more of you because you are extremely active here. Thank you so much for your contribution, for the time, for the inspiration, as you can say it. You're welcome. And, and as long uh, as we have to stay at home, I think I have a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Uh, well, it's great that you're using it, uh, the time that you have with us. We really appreciate that. But don't forget your wife, okay? She, she deserves some time too. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ben, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye-bye.